For 70 years, America's aircraft carriers have sailed the Western Pacific virtually unopposed. Now China is building its own aircraft carriers, submarines and long-range missiles. In the South China Sea, Beijing is trying to force the Philippines and Vietnam off disputed reefs and it's spending billions building new island bases. They don't have any really good islands, so they're literally dredging up soil, dumping it into the reef and creating new islands. What is China's plan? China is prepared to fight for territory. How can small, poor countries like the Philippines stop them? It is outrageous. It is expensive, like I said, excessive. Its allies are looking to America for help. The U.S. Navy is one of the single greatest contributors to the security and stability of the Asia-Pacific region. We have been for nearly 70 years. How far is America ready to go to stop China? This is the South China Sea. I'm on board a Filipino fishing boat, heading to a place few outsiders have ever been. In English, they're called the Spratlys, in Chinese, the Nansha, and in the Philippines, the Kalayan. There is no easy way to get to the Spratleys, and no comfortable way either. On the evening of our second day at sea, we spot land on the horizon, a tiny desert island. We have to anchor outside the reef. The only way ashore is an even smaller boat. They started building a pier here 10 years ago, but the ship bringing the building materials got stuck on the reef. It's still here today, slowly rotting away. Hello. How are you? The Philippines is about 400 kilometers back over there. Vietnam is 400 kilometers in that direction, and China is over a thousand kilometers in this direction. This place really is the definition of the middle of nowhere. So why have I come here? Well, because this island and a few others scattered around here are now at the center of a struggle for the control of the South China Sea. The Spratlys may be tiny, many no more than reefs, but they are strategically right at the heart of the South China Sea. Some are controlled by the Philippines, some by Vietnam, but most importantly, all the Spratlys and the whole of the South China Sea are claimed by China. And it is a claim that China is now starting to enforce. Once, back in the 1970s, Philippine dictator Ferdinand Marcos had big dreams of turning this tiny island into a military stronghold. Today, those dreams are long gone. The anti-aircraft guns are useless, rusted solid years ago. The concrete bunkers are slowly slipping into the sea. The Philippines is a military weakling. But why would anyone fight over this tiny scrap of land? Take a look from above and Pegasus' significance suddenly becomes clear. The significance of this place is really this. It has a runway, and a long one. There are really only two islands in the whole of this part of the South China Sea that have runways, and the other is controlled by Taiwan. If you want to control the sea, you need aircraft. And if you've got aircraft, you need runways. You can well understand why China would love to get its hands on this place. Unable to defend itself militarily, the Philippines is trying something else. Colonization. 
Around 20 families live in this ramshackle village on the island, about 100 people in all. They have a school and a clinic and a solar power station. Settlers like Melody have not come to Pagasa out of any great patriotic duty. They come because the government pays them to be here. In a country with 20% of its population living below the poverty line, that makes sense. As far as I know, this is the only island in the Spratlys where there is a permanent civilian population. It's not an easy life. There's no regular boat service, there are no regular flights. If you get sick, you have to hope that the Air Force will send a plane to pick you up. But having this village here is significant because it strengthens the Philippines' claim to this island and it makes it much more difficult for China to kick them out. There's not a huge amount to do on Pagasa. It's Sunday and that means a fishing expedition. But even here, politics intrudes. Settlers tell me overfishing by Chinese trawlers has destroyed the fish stocks on these reefs. It's hard to tell if it's true, but today's catch doesn't look like it's going to feed many people. On the boat watching all this is Mary Joy. It's her job to make sure this tiny community on Pagasa survives. It's a very, very important that we have a school and people there because uh, China may be thinking uh, we can go or, or not, uh, like that. So, so if, what will happen if you leave here, you think? If people leave here, what will happen? Uh, maybe China can go, <laughs> then approach uh, Pagasa Island to become uh, China territory, maybe. That's my opinion, that's, that's my view. Maybe. If, if the civilian go, uh, we go back to mainland. Just my view. That maybe can China maybe attack or, or what? Maybe. More than 2,000 kilometers to the west of Pagasa, I'm now aboard a US Navy aircraft. That tiny dot in the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean is a US aircraft carrier. And we are about to land on it. Uh, please, if you do have any uh, items, remember they have to go, go around you. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have to stop for the, the uh, rest of the landing as well as the uh, catapult. We're not on fire. That's condensation from the air conditioning system. So we're now on final approach. We're heading down to land on board the USS George Washington, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. When we do land, it will be an arrested landing. So when we hit the deck, we will go from about 150 miles an hour to zero in about two seconds. It's a pretty brutal landing. Okay, so welcome aboard the USS George Washington. We're uh, out in the Pacific Ocean, somewhere off the coast of Guam, and we've come out here to see what is the largest combined naval and air exercise in nearly 10 years. There, are, there is the USS George Washington Carrier Battle Group, there is the USS Carl Vinson Carrier Battle Group, and there are more than 200 Navy and Air Force planes taking part in this enormous exercise. The USS George Washington is the embodiment of US naval power at sea. It carries more than 60 fighter jets. It is a 100,000 ton floating airbase. 
In high tempo operations, they can launch a plane off this deck every 30 seconds. Well, we've just seen 11 aircraft launched from the deck of the George Washington, and now we're watching 11 more being back, brought back on board. You can see the last one just about to land behind me here. This really is an extraordinary sight. Only the US Navy can do this, and we're really out here in the Pacific for one reason. No one will say it openly, but this is about practicing the conflict with China. The man in command of this huge operation is Rear Admiral Mark Montgomery. The US Navy is one of the single greatest contributors to the security and stability of the Asia Pacific region. We have been for nearly 70 years. And I think that the, the, US, the US Navy plays a good role, whether it's in the South China Sea, East China Sea, Philippine Sea, uh, within the Korean theater, uh, both uh, stabilizing things, assuring our partners, and dissuading any adversaries from taking actions that are, that are uh, non-transparent or illegal. That is a polite way of saying that the U.S. will not sit back and watch Beijing turn the Western Pacific into a Chinese lake. This Chinese government video shows the Chinese Navy's proudest new possession, its very own aircraft carrier, the Liaoning. This year, the Liaoning sailed into the South China Sea for the first time. It was a very deliberate show of force and intent. China is building new ultra-silent submarines and powerful long-range missiles, so-called carrier killers. They're all designed to keep America's precious carriers out of the South China Sea. How to deal with these threats is now a big headache for US Navy commanders. When we talk about our capabilities, we're talking about our capabilities to operate uh, in a generally unrestricted way in the waters of our choice. Uh, and uh, as some countries have increasingly uh, complex uh, anti-access or area denial weapons, we have to develop our tactics, techniques and procedures to continue to operate in an unfettered manner. As if on cue, the George Washington comes under simulated attack. Part of the ship is reported to be on fire. Aviation, hydraulic, pneumatic shop, IT respond from Fair One Bravo. For the last decade, China's leaders have insisted its rise will be peaceful, and America has responded by insisting it wants to engage with China, not contain it. But out here in the Pacific, there is a distinct feeling that the mood is changing. Back out in the South China Sea, we have left Pagasa behind and are now on the hunt for China's islands. In fact, China doesn't control any real islands in the Spratlys. At least it didn't until a few months ago. In the distance, we spot what looks like land, an island where there shouldn't be one. On my GPS, and this has the latest software on it, it says elevated house with a mark of a reef. It's very clear that this ahead is not a reef, it's an island. Well, unfortunately, just as we've approached, the weather has turned absolutely foul and the, the rain is now tipping down. We virtually can't see anything, so you're going to have to take my word for it. But right behind me here, just about 2,000 meters away, is a brand new island that literally didn't exist three or four months ago. Our fishing boat captain is shocked by what we've seen here. A few hours later the rain lifts. Off to the east, we pass a tiny Vietnamese outpost perched on top of a submerged reef. Then ahead, another artificial island. This one much bigger, 
and it is a hive of activity. This behind me here is called Johnson South Reef and until the end of last year this was another submerged reef controlled by the Chinese. There was a construction on it, there was a, a white blockhouse in the middle that you can still see there. That was the only structure there but in the last few months this place has been completely transformed. The Chinese started off by bringing in dredgers and dredging up huge amounts of material to fill in the reef and create this artificial island. Now there is a big construction site you can see on top of this new island. What exactly they're building here, no one is really sure. They may just be making a bigger island, they may be building a new port here, but there are some reports, especially from the Philippine government, that this is where the Chinese are going to build their new South China Sea air base. China took this reef from Vietnam in a brief but vicious battle in 1988. In this Chinese video you can see the Vietnamese troops standing waist deep on the submerged reef. Who fired the first shot is still disputed, but the result is not. 70 Vietnamese troops dead, two ships sunk, China victorious. For 25 years, China did almost nothing here, until this year. Last year, it was still a coral atoll. By February this year, a huge dredging operation began pumping millions of tons of sand into the reef. By the end of March, a new island had emerged. In Manila, China's island building is causing consternation. It is outrageous. It is expensive, like I said, excessive and uh, without basis under international law. Well, they're doing it because they can and, uh, and, and they think they're right. In April this year, China's claims very nearly erupted into open conflict with Vietnam. <laughs> Chinese Coast Guard boats repeatedly rammed Vietnamese fishing boats inside Vietnam's own 200-mile exclusive economic zone. I think China is prepared to fight for territory for several decades. And at that time, if they say, they, OK, we need to, they will do it. So you see where they have several border, uh, border, dispute, border uh, wars or major clashes with the Soviet Union, with the Indian, with the Vietnam, with the, uh, uh, what the, 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 uh, in, the war in the uh, Korea. So we never, Chinese government, feel, hey, are, we feel this a kind of threat. They may take the military action to, uh, re, uh, in responding to this uh, 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 challenge. The one thing the Philippines has that Vietnam does not is a mutual defense treaty with the United States. In terms of uh, uh, Philippine and U.S. relations, we have a 1951 mutual defense treaty, and uh, uh, especially during the last uh, visit of President Obama, he reiterated uh, the U.S.'s uh, ironclad commitment to, uh, to their treaty obligation towards the Philippines. When you see just how weak the Philippine military is, you can well understand why Manila wants the US at its side. On board our little fishing boat, we've spent another night at sea. Now with the dawn rising, a new silhouette appears on the horizon. A rusting World War II hulk stuck atop another reef. This ancient rust bucket is the Sierra Madre. The Philippine Navy scuttled this ship here back in 1999 in a desperate attempt to stop the Chinese from moving in and claiming it. On board, a tiny garrison of 10 Marines, all that stands in the way of another takeover.
The Sierra Madre is more death trap than refuge. The deck is peppered with holes that are patched with anything they can find. The ship's guns are useless, the radio antennas broken. You can only imagine what it must be like on here when there's a storm. For the Marines it is a constant battle to ward off boredom and hunger. Food is often so scarce they must catch or grow their own. They can only bathe when they've collected enough rainwater. Meanwhile, just beyond the reef, two shiny new Chinese Coast Guard ships roam up and down. The coast of the Philippines is about 120 nautical miles in that direction. The coast of China, on the other hand, is 800 miles in that direction. But those two Chinese ships sitting just off the reef behind me are here to enforce Beijing's claim that this submerged reef is actually Chinese territory. For the last year, the Chinese ships have been blockading the Sierra Madre, trying to prevent resupplies from getting through and wear down their morale. The Philippine Air Force has had to resort to dropping food consignments by plane. Not all are this successful. Isa sa mga sakripisyo is yung in terms of uh, family, no? which is uh, napakalayo. So, isa yun sa mga sacrifices. This is clearly not a contest of equals. Ten men on a rusty ship are not any real barrier to a Chinese takeover. But Beijing knows the Philippines has a defense treaty with the United States. And perhaps because of that, it is biding its time. Some have described China's actions out here as salami slicing, or in Chinese, as cabbage slicing. But by its own statements, China's ambitions are clear to control this sea and to keep America and its allies out. America says it will not allow that to happen, and that means these two mighty countries are now on a potentially very dangerous collision course.